programmers welcome to another NDS programming tutorial today multi-file projects now some of you are just like why do I even need a multi-file project like can't you just put all your code in main in like the main.c++ like this thing right here just put it all there one file one project done yeah you could that's not very practical and the reason for that is because sometimes you have more people that want to get in on your project or you just need to separate things just okay this code right here is for graphics this code right here is for sound the code over there is for some kind of engine or whatever sometimes you just need to spread things apart so it's easier to navigate and find and while you could somehow pull that off in like a one file program it's not very practical and then of course if you're working with other people you you and then each of your friends who are programming with you should all be working on their own file so as you don't overwrite each other's stuff and yeah that's why you want a multi-file project and of course if you're working with friends it always helps to have a little mechanism such as this cloud storage system that allows you to have all your project right here so you can go into sources and you can and if you see a file that you want to edit you can go and edit it so hopefully I have convinced you that you definitely need multi-file projects like this is useful stuff so why don't we just get jump right into how it works so first of all you'll notice that you can give the other sets of code their different names they can be C files or C++ files and if I open this up you will notice that yes I sorry that was my sister uh, did you have to interrupt while I was recording anyways yeah I'm at home right now I'm in college right now I'm at home this is Christmas break New Year's Eve day to be honest and I just felt like making a video today so anyways first thing you notice is that this looks a lot like your normal code that's because it is you still have the same includes for whatever files you want to use and you have your functions just the functions these are all like get key functions whatever I'll go through that in a different tutorial but then you will notice one there are no defines no constants and two you have this key input dot h included I actually made a typo there. There we go. Just to say that. And anyways, you'll notice these are in parentheses. And that means that it's in the very same directory. This header file is in the same directory as all the other files. And also, and you can also kind of guess from it is that this this code hasn't really been compiled yet that's why it's with all the others so basically this file this key input dot h that's where all our defines and all our prototypes are gonna go because then all the other files are also gonna look at this header file and know what's inside this code like what, fun what functions constants can the others use so this allows different files of code to be able to see what's in the other files in a sense and that's how this works so what does a header file look like well kinda looks like code 
first of all, you have this weird um, if not define, define thing. And this just prevents the, the header file from it being copied from like being copied over and over because multiple different files might in both include this header file and so only if it's not already defined do you want to define what's in the header file and then you normally just give it an all caps version of your file name that's one of the things you want to do is you want to make sure your your C or C++ file and your header file have the same name not including like the .h or .c whatever so, and here you do the all caps version the key input right here um, you wanna give a little header thing of or comment area that describes the file Generally, your header file should have a lot of documentation as to like what the functions in your code do. Um, this is because people, your friends should not have to look through all your code to see how your code works. They should just be able to look at your functions and be able to use them. And that, so you want to document your header files very well with comments, kind of put like what like the main thing like what it does who made it maybe even put contact information if you feel like it here's all the defines this this should look familiar somewhat familiar to you and these are all the prototypes and notice i don't have any documentation with this because well this is just kind of self-explanatory in a sense I kind of explained it in other code and didn't really feel like documenting it but you guys should know how that all works now I kind of I kind of explained it already and then you have this number and diff so basically when, when you pair up the this file with this file you have your own sets of code that can be easily included in other people's projects or include with your friends projects and if you need to make changes to something only you should be able to make changes to it so that's pretty simple so you probably can just already figure out like how do you write a header file but I am gonna sh pull up one more example of a little template just to clarify a few things. Um, first of all, you always want to make sure that you change like the names right here to match the name up there. And then if you're working with C files, you want to uncomment this little bit. And basically this means that if a C++ file is trying to refer to this, um, you need to tell the C++ file that this is that this header file it's referring to a like a C file the code is actually in C and then of course you do your if not define define thing give your little header information place your defines place your prototypes your end if and then this is a little ending thing for the whole C++ business. And then, so if you're working with both C and C++ code, it's important that you do this, otherwise you'll get some very strange errors. Um, so just do it this way. I include this template just to make things a little bit easier in case you can't remember like the order things should go, documenting. And now there's one more thing I want to show you, and that's like what some real documenting might look like. I believe I have it in sound file, sound h. Here, this is an audio streaming library type or module thing that I've been working on. 
And if you notice, I have comments all over the place. Um, comments telling it what that thing does. Comments telling it what those things do. You'll notice I have different types of comments for or different comments code, so it's color coordinated a little bit based on like what I want to do. These tell it like what do these functions do. Um, this tells like what the default thing does. So there's one's a default and one's a custom setup. And then these are just describing what all these functions do. And then this comment right here, you may have seen that before. This is just a, this is just like a little reminder thing that many are in the habit of doing. And I just like to keep it there for this, just so I remember what I'm working with and remembering that it's sounds H that we're working with. So you want to document your header files very well. So people should be able to look at this and as long as they know like how sound on the DS works, they should be able to understand how all these functions work without having to know like the actual streaming code that goes behind it. Because trust me, that's some really messed up code. <laughs> Anyways, Hopefully that explains multi-file projects. Um, you just include all these, you would include all these files in your sources folder, the header files and the C or C++ files, just include them all together. Um, as, and make sure that in like your main file, you include all the header files for all the other project parts or at least include the ones that that have stuff that you want to use and then the others can include their own stuff. You can make you can chain it however you want. Sometimes it's best to just include everything. You can even make a header file that includes everything else for you. So you don't have to do it in main. That's actually a somewhat practical setup. Um, isn't doesn't get doesn't do everything you would still have to include like the stuff that you actually need to use but it's an option anyways hopefully that explains a lot of things about multi-file projects hopefully you guys can come up with your own convention of being able to put it all together our organization so far has been using Dropbox it's been it's worked very well for us in getting our first game done it also allows us to share media rather quickly. So, sorry about going a little bit longer on different things and such. Hopefully this covers everything you need to know. And see you in the next tutorial.